Welcome to Hockey Night in New York, where Islanders hockey always reigns supreme. Whether you were raised at the barn in Uniondale or born in the stable at Belmont, Hockey Night in New York is your home for all things Isles. Now, let's drop the puck and get this party started. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Hockey Night in New York. Welcome to the program, everyone. It is Saturday, February 18th, 2023. Coming at you from the great Lost Farmer Brewing Company in Mineola to get ready for Isles versus Bruins. If you happen to be watching on YouTube, do not adjust your screens. We had a little tech issue with the audio in the first few minutes of the show. So this is Shawnee from the future plugging in those first few minutes. Then your audio will sync up nice and snug with the video you are watching. So with that, I'm joined by former Hockey Night New York co-host Tony Stabile and current Hockey Night New York co-host Stefan Rosner will be calling in to talk the latest on the Islanders. And so we want to remind you that we're proud to be presented by Blue Line Deli and Bagels, located at 719 West Jericho Turnpike in Huntington, 217 Carlton Avenue in East Islip, and of course, UBS Arena at Belmont. We're also proud to be sponsored by Lost Farmer Brewing Company, located here at 63A 2nd Street in Mineola. And don't forget to join us here again this Wednesday, the 22nd, for another Isles viewing party as they face the Jets. We'll also be doing hockey trivia that night for some great prizes, so come on down, watch the Isles versus the Jets and test your hockey knowledge. Then we'll be back here again Sunday, February 26th to see the Isles versus the Jets one more time to raise money for Courage for Carson. So please come down and help support a great cause. And last but not least, we are proud to be sponsored by Main Street Board Game Cafe in Huntington Village on Long Island's North Shore. Games for sale and for open play, food and drink, beer and wine, fun and friends. Bring the magic of phones down, eyes up, tabletop board games to your family. Our staff will help you find the right game for you from old favorites to the hottest new releases. We have everything from strategic to easy party games. Get off your screens and unplug your game for a night your family will remember. Looking for meetups to join? Our Magic the Gathering, Dungeons & Dragons, or Game Night Live communities are welcoming for all. We also do parties and corporate events. Located at 307 Main Street in Huntington Village, go to mainstboardgamecafe.com for more information. Main Street Board Game Cafe. Find your crowd. Unplug. Your game, we also raised money today for the Long Island Warriors Help a Hero cause, benefiting a military family in need, the Drenken family. The Warriors are also hosting a benefit game this Saturday, the 25th, at 7 p.m. at Bethpage Ice Arena, where the Warriors will play the Suffolk County Sheriff's Office to raise money for the family as well, with admission costing $10, so come on down and please support a great, great cause. Go to liwarriorshockey.org for more information on a great program that supports military veterans, active military, reserves, and their families on Long Island. And so, thank you all for lending your ears to take in all that information. And now, the show continues with Tony Stabile discussing the Islanders' issues on the defensive side of the puck. Enjoy. I don't know if it's because they're trying to, um, they're trying to balance you know, playing more offensive, playing, you know, more of a, you know, undisciplined hockey, trying to get the puck, you know, to create more offense and then le- relying a little bit less on defense, which we all wanted, but this is the end result. And you've been seeing it really over the course of the last month or six weeks. They, they don't play a consistent game. You don't know what team is going to show up on the ice every night. And it's it's been a problem. No, it's it's been a huge problem. And it's hard to figure this team out because, again, you know, some nights, especially earlier in the season, you look at November, right? And they're, they're beating teams like Colorado. They're coming back. They're, they're winning big games. And then, you know, they, they know what's on the table. They're looking at the standings. They've admitted it much in interviews. They know who's around them, how many points they need to pick up to get into the playoffs. And they come out flat against some of these teams that they'd be in a much better position now if they just showed up against those teams like Vancouver, Ottawa, and Montreal. I mean, those are big points. A couple of those games were at home. Mm-hmm. And they have barely anything to show for it. So you go into last night, and you're like, I don't know what's going to happen. Exactly. What's going to happen? I don't think they knew what was going to happen because they took the first period and a half off. Right, and which which has been consistent the entire season, and it's starting to look like another loss, and then it's going to be even tougher to get into the playoff mix. Everybody knows how many games in hand Pittsburgh has in the Islanders. They're really chasing the Capitals here, and, you know, it looked like it was going to go south again, and then all of a sudden they show up in the third period. They basically save their season. And now they're, mm-hmm. they're, they're sitting in a playoff spot as we speak right now. A lot can change, and a lot's going to change from now until April. No question. But they're in a fight now. They're in a battle. And what do you, what do you see going forward today? I mean, they're, they're facing the top team in the league right now in the Boston Bruins. Who's going to show up today? <laughs> <laughs> I, 
you would like to think that they would come out in this game and they would just they would show up from minute one, put pressure on them right off the bat, and play hard, play a hard, a hard no style of hockey. But you would thought that they would have did that last night, especially if the team that they're chasing. You would have thought that they would come out like gangbusters, and that's not what happened. So they need to focus on what they do well. They have a solid defense. At the the you know the centers need to come back and, and, and make sure that they're doing what they need to do. I know Pajot is out right now. I know Horvat is still kind of you know adjusting to sure. you know to playing in the, you know in this style. I I really think that this team is talented enough to play with these these teams that are above them and above them. You know, with Boston, they should be able to to, to hang with them. This is this is a, is a talented group. They, you, you obviously see that they can score. They can keep the puck out of the net. They have solid goaltending between Sorokin and Varlamov. So that's what you should be seeing from them night in and night out. Right. But if you play a full 60 minutes of hockey, which they're not doing, no. they have not done it consistently the entire season. No, they haven't. I think the game that they played the most representative of a 60-minute game was against Seattle not too long ago, but uh, yes. outside of that, really not too much. No, no. But I do want to pick up this conversation. However, we got the great Stefan Rosner of NYI Hockey Now and, of course, Hockey Night in New York joining us, so we're going to take a quick break. Thanks a lot for tuning in live at twitch.tv slash Hockey Night NY, and, of course, coming out to the great Lost Farmer here in Mineola. We're going to take that break. We'll be right back. I don't want to hear it. It's over. I can't believe they fell short again. Yeah, but they played so well. They made it to the semifinals two years in a row. The semifinals aren't the cup. God damn it, I hate those lightning. They'll get another shot at it next year. I don't even want to talk about it anymore, all right? They lost, okay? Let me just sit here and enjoy the one thing that makes me a little bit happy. This fresh, delicious, tasty, meaty, turkey-filled blue line combo. I eat three every day to help keep me strong. Hey, Donnie, can I have one of those? Coming right up. Talk about a blast from the Blue Line. Blue Line Deli and Bagels. Our goal is to make you a hero. Miss the days of mixtapes and arcades? Love the taste of a bold IPA or maybe an ice cold lager? There's a place where all of those magical things come together. Lost Farmer Brewing Company. At 63A East 2nd Street in the heart of Mineola, Lost Farmer combines a love of the 80s and a passion for quality beer to create brews that can only be described as gnarly, radical, and totally tubular. The retro vibe of the tasting bar will amp up your nostalgia while the blend of both local and exotic ingredients amp up your taste buds. Beer not your thing? Crack open a can of cider or a sip of Chardonnay on the extended patio. Order up from the snack menu? You can even bring your own. If you're more of a homebody, pick up a growler to go or order online at lostfarmerbrewing.com. And for all of Long Island's hockey fans, Lost Farmer created the delicious Stable Shaker American Lager to celebrate the newly built UBS Arena at Belmont Park. Whether you're at the stable for a hockey game, concert, or a comedy show, you can find Stable Shaker by can and draft around the arena. So raise a cup to the next cup with Lost Farmer Brewery, the future of Long Island craft beer. Thanks for giving some time to our sponsors. Ready to talk more aisles? The train rolls on right here on Hockey Night in New York. That's right, folks. The train rolls on right here at Hockey Night in New York. Coming at you live from Lost Farmer Brewing Company in Mineola. Having a great time here. Joining us from NYI Hockey Now and, of course, Hockey Night in New York is the great Stefan Rosner. Stefan, thanks for joining us, bud, up in Boston. How you doing, man? Good, good. Getting some dropkick murphys on the way up. Shipped up here and, uh, yeah, got in this morning, so... Looking forward to this game tonight. Very nice. Love to hear it. So, listen, Tony and I were just talking about last night's game, talking about how inconsistent this New York Islander team is. You don't know which team you're getting on a nightly basis. They're going up against the top of the league here in the Boston Bruins. What do you make of this game coming off a, a pretty uh, emotional victory last night over the Penguins? I think if there was any time for a team like the Islanders to carry momentum into a game, tonight would be the night. Obviously, Boston's the best team in hockey. If the Islanders come out flat like they did last night for 45 minutes, they're not going to have a chance to come back. The Pittsburgh Penguins, as much as the Islanders won last night, Pittsburgh Penguins had chances to put that game away early. They did not. Islanders have to come out strong, or this is a Boston Bruins team. I mean, they just defeated the uh, National Predators 5 nothing the other day. They could do the same thing tonight. So, yeah, carrying momentum is going to be critical, especially with two guys missing. Hey, Stephanie. Um... 
So we're uh, we're talking about we're talking about the inconsistency of this team and the big change in this team. It recently has been Bill Cole Horvat. Uh, you could see he's still kind of finding his way a little bit um, on the ice. You know, getting accustomed to his new teammates and whatnot. But he brings so much more than that to the room. Talk a little bit about what uh, Bo is doing uh, inside the room and what you've uh, you've learned from talking to him. Yeah. So first off, awesome guy. Um, obviously, he's a former captain with the Canucks, and he reminds me of the Zach Freezy like where they're not going to not gonna be the vocal people in the room. They're going to lead by example on the ice. But Horvath said it best. He goes, everyone in this room is a leader. We can all talk. It's been great. He said, Andrews Lee's been great. He's probably one of his best friends. He's coming here because he's been so nice. He's, he's back there texting him immediately, and obviously both the you know, captains, they have a, they have that relationship there, but uh, we're not in the room, I mean, he talks after every practice, he'll talk, I think he talks every day for like 20 minutes after the game, so he's always accessible, and I think on the ice for sure, Cars all have a different level to his game now, and now that Horvath's here, and Horvath's, yeah, like you said, he's finding his way with the MVP, he was at his best yesterday, but he does so much that goes under the radar, and we talk about that with a lot of Islanders, but even now, the defensive zone, I think, is where people didn't really know how good he was, but below the dots, he just he just makes those key plays and games, and it, it's paid off for Barzal and Horvat, and obviously I leave it to the that line yesterday really helped as well. Yeah, the instant chemistry between Barzell and Horvat has definitely been huge for this team. Uh, you'd like to think it would have resulted in a couple more wins since he's been here, but definitely great to see, especially for the future with the both having these long-term contracts. But you have a couple injuries to the team. You have a couple guys on the men. Josh Bailey goes out. They bring uh, Anders Lee up to the first line. How did you like him next to Barzell and Horvat last night? Well, it seemed like Lee had been playing with Barzell the whole season. Now, obviously, that had been a duo since Trotz got here. Yeah, last year, I know he separated him for a little bit, and this year, not even played together that much. But I think we did exactly what he had to do. We talked about how his job doesn't change what he's with. With Nelson, he's got to win the pucks down low, crashing that hard, getting those rebounds. And with Barzon Horvath, the same thing. Horvath obviously shoots a little more now, not to the level that Brock Nelson does, but he's a shooter. And we saw yesterday, and his late, his first goal was off, um, you know, a trot shot, if you will, off Omar, a tee shot. And then, his, and then his second goal is a deflection off a uh, Matt Barzal shot. So I think Anderson did exactly what he had to do. And it, it's good to see. He had no goals over his last five games. He gets two last night. He's a big part of it. He's, you know, as much as you're a leader in the room, you do got to lead on the ice. And I don't think Lee has been as strong as he wanted to be. But last night was just a, a great sign for Lee and for the rest of the team that if this guy gets going, and this guy, you know what he did last year, he can get hot now. Now you have two lines that are hot at the same time. It, you'll be able to, you know, counteract the loss of Pazel, Paralong, and or being the other guys, especially when the schedule. I mean, they're playing, they're going to be playing tough opponents now, and these are critical games. They absolutely are. And, uh, you know, there's a guy on this team that I feel has gotten a little bit lost in the shuffle recently with Horvat and the way Barzell's been playing, and that's Brock Nelson. I mean, Brock Nelson leads the team in points, 55 points, got 24 goals. He's been playing fantastic. This is a guy who last year took that big step into being a, a consistent offensive player, and he's shown it again this year. I mean, you know, having Horvat and, and Nelson now as your top two centers, you know, that, that, that's, that's a luxury right there. I mean, you know, the, tell me, you know, Nelson, the way that he has responded to taking that next, le you know, taking that next level. Talk a little bit about the way you feel Nelson has, has embraced that second line role and, and, and the offense that he's providing. Yeah, so I think with Nelson, last year, obviously, he showed that he could be consistent for a full season. I put that in quotes because he did miss significant time with an injury. And this year, he, he's been streaky. Started off really cold, then got hot, then got really cold. But now he's on a 12 uh, game point streak right now. I think I think he relishes the opportunity for that comes here. And I, as much as Nelson's probably the most founder's best overall scorer, you know, he, he gets to play now with Kyle Pamiri, who got around to play with in a while. And it's been. That's been a big difference for him. When uh, Nelson's line has really been, he's the only guy shooting. And I have a guy, Tom Airy, who's shooting as well. So it just opens up and makes, makes, it makes um, Nelson just able to do more in the ice. He's got more room. He's got a shot. And for him, it's, it's confidence. You talk about the mental hurdle earlier in the year. I think he went the first, I don't know, 10, 8, 15 years later. was that Carolina game. He hadn't scored a goal yet. He scores two in that one. So, yeah, he's been good in the room, too. I mean, again, I think he was frustrated a lot early on with not getting his shot up, that was the biggest thing. You looked at his numbers, I think, in the first 10 games, he had maybe one or two high danger chances. He wasn't getting involved. But, again, you know, no one's really consistent for a full 82-game season. And right now, the Islanders need their best players firing all cylinders. 
and again, Brock Nelson's roast the season for sure. And again, the lines haven't mattered. Whether it's the power play, he's got two powerful goals in his last two games. But I think Kevin Palmieri has been a, a guy that no one saw really coming. I guess he thought Palmieri would relish with an opportunity with Barzal. That didn't happen. Palmieri gets hurt. And usually he's playing with Pajon and Parise. So I think that's been a duo that no one's really talked about that much. And I think Parise did that line. He's played with Palmieri and, again, does similar things that Lee does. I think it's a perfect fit. And Nelson, again, Nelson's coming through big time. Yeah, without without a doubt, Stefan. And, and you know, you see all the goals that they put up last night. They have they've had a decent amount of games this season, putting up goals. It hasn't been as much as a problem as it has been documented documented over the last few years, especially with the Barry Trotz system that they've been playing. But an issue that's definitely peaked its head out this year is the defense, and I think that's something that we need to focus on. It hasn't been consistent. They're having a, a hard time keeping pucks out of the net, even with one of the best goalies in the league, and Ilya Sorokin. So what do you make of this defense? They give up a, another bunch of goals last night. Uh, fortunately for the Isles, they scored enough to beat them. But you look at this defense here, it's, it's very similar to the ones that they had under Barry Trotz. Guys who've played in the system, you and I talked about this last week. What's going on with this defense here that they're having such trouble keeping pucks away from, uh, from the net? It's actually quite shocking what's happening. And I think Lambert described it perfectly, calling it situational awareness. I mean, you saw last night, there are too many uh, forwards on the opposing team just running the D. I know last night Raquel, Raquel had a deflection where he just went right between Mayfield and uh, Romanov. And that's been a pair that struggles, but also starts with boxing out. I mean, the Islanders are not helping their goaltenders out at all. And yeah, you know, Sorokin set a bar so high the last couple of years that he could stop everything. But you're seeing though another team is crossing out with two or three guys and you can't see he's as good as an average goal in that point. Maybe he'll make that extra two saves, but the Islanders are not doing a good job boxing the forwards out and it's leading to rebound chances, screenshots going in. And that's been their, their biggest issue to me. You know, Noah Dobson not scoring in front of his goal, the lack of communication. I mean, Scott, looking at Scott Mayfield's stats, he has, I think he's, Six in the league in, in block shots, but he has the most, uh, fourth most or sixth most defensive turnovers. So, again, you have guys like that where you, they just need to be smarter with the puck because the Islanders, again, the Islanders can beat the offense. We've seen it. It actually hasn't been as bad as people thought. It's not close to 3.5 goals where they were earlier in the year. But they're scoring an operation in these games. And the defense, again, that's been the biggest concern. I don't think Lane's going to mix up his deep pairs. I think he's comfortable with them, but at the same time, it's, you got to win your battles. And I think, you know, everyone wants to blame Lane Lambert for what's gone wrong. Right. But at some point, you need your, your players that, you know, these guys know how to play. You just said it. They have the same, they're mostly the same defense for the last couple of years. Pelic knows how to box out. Pulak knows how to clear a play. These right. guys don't just forget how to do that. Now, maybe it has something to do with the structure and the, the situational differences that, that it has, but at the same time, you're paying a lot of these guys to, to do the, you know, that's it. Boxing out is something that they've been doing since they were 10 or 12 years old. So I think it comes down to the players just giving more on a nightly basis. And I think, you know, as pelic has been in the lineup for more games, he's getting more comfortable. And sitting with Pulak, having Pelic back, Dobson's got to be smarter. Romanov's got to be smarter. Again, you have to remember they're also 22 years old, 23. So, right. But at some point, you need your guys to step up because, again, as much as the offense could be really good, the bread and butter in this team is defense and goaltending. I mean, if they're going to do anything this year, whether it's make the playoffs, Going to run. They're going to have to rely on that defense to be that locked in defense they had on their trials. Stefan, there's no doubt about it. And, and you brought up the turnovers, and it, and it sparked a thought in my mind. Do you think that has anything to do with, I suppose, the system that they're playing in the sense that are these guys panicking a little bit? Are they getting forced by the, the opposing forwards that are giving, us, giving them less time to make a good decision with the puck, and they're kind of just making panic moves and trying to get rid of it more, uh, more quickly, and that's what's resulting in these turnovers? I think it's uh, player specific. Like with Romanov, I think his biggest issue is he's, he, he scans the D zone. And when he gets the puck on the stick behind the net or in the corner, he doesn't look up again. He goes, okay, I know someone's on the wall, so I'm going to throw it there, but that, it's gone. That play is gone. But I think for Romanov, for him, he just got to take that extra second to, to look up and find the guy. But also, I think it's the forwards aren't helping the D either. Again, you're asking for a pass, or you're not finding open spaces, and you know, when they're when they're two score checking hard, these really good teams, they don't give you a lot of time and space. So the Islanders are the defensemen are trying to force things that aren't there or things that were there and now aren't there. It all comes down for me to communication. I think if the Islanders, you know, maybe slow the game down a little bit, they're not a fast team. So if they're playing a fast game, that's probably because they got caught in the other team's game plan. So I think what the Islanders should do, and we'll see if they can do that tonight against the Bruins, that top team to play, is get the puck behind your net. Focus and clean, you know, you can have a basic breakout and it'll still work every time. You don't have to be crazy or creative, but the problem is when you put it in like the Bruins or whatever it is, it's hard on the four check. Yeah, there is a panic. 
there's a tendency because time and space is taken away, and there's a couple of guys, like I just said, grown up, who don't pick their head up. And if a forward doesn't say, hey, not open, or, or hey, don't throw it to me, or whatever, then you get lost. And that's how, you know, the Islanders are doing themselves a lot this year because they made all mistakes in their own zone. You know, <clears throat> I agree with everything you're saying here. And uh, but I guess the big question now, with two weeks left before the deadline, is this team going to look anything like this? <laughs> after the deadline you know because there are some guys who are on expiring contracts um you know yeah. more on defense uh in goal i mean are you expecting if they stay in this position that they're in right now that they're going to be buyers or do you think they're going to be selling off some pieces and trying to recoup i think Rui has an ego i don't think he will want to sell if he doesn't have to if downers are within striking distance of a player spot or in a player spot i'm not saying he's going to buy I don't think he would sell. Now, we also don't know, you know, Mayfield and Romanov, uh, Mayfield and Barlamov, they both said they want to stay in sign extensions. Now, if that's the case, you know, learn from history, do that now, um, or have that, you know, have that written down and maybe just wait to publicly announce it because that, if, if they don't and they you hold on to the Mounders, don't make the playoffs, they walk. I mean, you're, you, these are two guys that could get you a first. Now, the market obviously changes. It could get out a second round pick, but these are guys, I mean, Mayfield is a guy that's, Penalty kill, block shots, big body in front, playoff experience, has brought offense in the playoffs. Teams will overpay for him. And for Barlamo, there's a handful of teams that need goaltenders. Now, he has a 16 team uh, no movement clause, which is half the league. But at the same time, if he wants to come back in the offseason, let him go and compete for a cup, get the first or second round taken and get, recoup some assets, and then re sign him. I think, I think if he takes a, a pay cut for 2.5 million and the Islanders sign him for uh, three years, yeah, I think that, that works. Yep, and uh, I just just want to get your quick thoughts on on the big trade last night with uh, Toronto acquiring Ryan Ryan, Ryan O'Reilly. Uh, how does that change this? You know the the look, and what is that going to force the teams around the, the Toronto Maple Leafs to do? Yeah, well, first off, for Toronto, I think it's critical for them because they need as much playoff experience players as possible. And I think it also it sets a market too. They got a tremendous amount of picks back, and like a guy like Pajot, I'm not saying the honor is going to move him. But, um, you know, now, okay, there's a market. Some team that wanted a center didn't get one. Now the Islanders, you know, is, is probably going to be a handful of teams calling him. So I think uh, the market's definitely set. I think people are going to overpay Tazo again. they got to like, play up the screens. But I, look at Toronto. I mean, they're just they're trying to do everything they can. Because if they, don't, if they can't make the best of first now with three first-line centers, I, they're never going to. Mm. Well, Stefan, great stuff. I know you got to get back there and cover the game up there at uh, TD Bank Garden. So uh, good luck up there. Have fun, and uh, we'll see you soon, bud. Thanks a lot. Sounds good. Have a good one, guys. You too, man. All right, that was the great Stefan Rosner of NYI Hockey Now and, of course, Hockey Night in New York up there covering the game. Hopefully uh, hopefully you have some fun up there. <laughs> it's Boston. He'll have fun. Yeah. It's a fun town. I just, like, just as we were talking about it before he came on, like, I'm really curious as, you know, what Islander team we're going to see today. Mm -hmm. And, you know, coming off of, of a high of, of the win last night to keep them in it, to beat the Pittsburgh Penguins. And, I mean, it's so funny how they're right there with them points-wise, but there's so many games in hand, which is so strange for the Islanders this year because usually they're a team that plays catch-up when it comes to games in hand. Usually they're a team that doesn't play as many games as the rest of the competition in the league. And for whatever reason, this year, maybe it has something to do with moving into the new building, setting their own schedule. They're not, you know, competing with another tenant or anything like that. It's basically just, it's the Islanders joint, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe that has something to do with it. But they're in a situation where they've, they've played so many more games than a lot of teams in the league where, you know, they're, they're kind of, they, they have to win these games because Pittsburgh's, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh's going to pass them. You know, I mean, yeah. unless they, they have some sort of falling off of a cliff, Pittsburgh's going to be ahead of them. It's really just a, a one-spot race here between the Caps, the Isles, the Panthers. You have Detroit in there now. You have Buffalo in there now. And it's going to be wild watching this race from here on out. And it just makes you wonder, do the Islanders have what it takes to beat out all of those teams it's, in this in this race? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. And, you know, if Pittsburgh gets a goaltender, they're going to be in a much better position than mm -hmm. they are right now. Their goaltending has been their Achilles heel this year. Sidney Crosby is having a fantastic season. Malkin's had a great season. You know, they're, they're a team that, that you look, they, they have not been good over the course of the last couple of years. I know we've taken them out of the playoffs a <laughs> bunch of different times, which I always sure. like to say sure. as much as I possibly can. But, I mean, Pittsburgh is a team that knows how to get in. And if they get a goaltender and they, and they stabilize that position just a little bit, 
that's going to be a game changer for them. And they have those four games in hand. Washington's the same thing. I mean, Washington has not, they haven't gotten the production out of uh, Backstrom and, and uh, Kuznetsov as they usually have. Mm. Ovechkin is still going to be trying to get that last cup. You know, he, you know, he's, his, you know, he doesn't have it, you know, 10 years left in the league. So, right. you know, so that's another, that's a team that is, is going to be there. They have solid goaltending. So it's going to be interesting to see what these teams do now. And that's kind of why I asked Stefan that question, because mm -hmm. with O'Reilly going to Toronto, other teams now are going to have to, you know, they're going to have to step it up because now Toronto has gotten just that much better, you know, acquiring O'Reilly. And Cardi is a good player, too. So right. it, it's, it's a good, that's a good move for them. No, it is and one that I didn't see coming. And, and, I, I and now, listen, I haven't been watching every Toronto Maple Leaf game, but I... I was kind of of the thinking that defense is, is the spot that they probably still need a little 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 more help with and they go and get a guy like ryan o'reilly who's a leader who's obviously a very very talented player in this team and he brings that playoff style hockey that that's another thing that the toronto maple leafs need he's been there he's won a cup he knows what the grind is in the playoffs and he's a guy that can definitely help them win around i hate to say it but um, it is still a little surprising to me that he's the guy that they went out and got. But, yeah, they're, they're a little scarier now with him in the lineup. Absolutely. And he's one of the top three or four face-off men in the game, too. So that, that's always, you know, a, a positive for him, you know, for them. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it, he plays a 200-foot game, too. He's not just an offensive player. He's, you know, he, he, can, you know, he can play defense. He's, it's, that's a significant move. And, what, and not so much for the Islanders, but for the team's because I think the Islanders made their, their big their their big acquisition for this year. And I oh, yeah. and, and Horvat's the Horvat move for me is was not just about this year. Like everyone said, you know, oh, they're buying. It's not. Right. It's it's a building block. It got them the opportunity to talk to him before anybody else did. They got him right. signed to the, the extension and And the eighth year. And he, the eighth, yeah. uh, eighth year is huge. Yeah. But, you know, the big thing for, you know, about this trade also is that it kind of forced Barzell to move out of that center spot, which mm -hmm. we kind of known for a while now that he needed to move out of, out, off, off, the center, off the center position. So by acquiring a guy like that, it's, you know, he moves and then he gets to play his game without having to worry about the defense. He hasn't been taking faceoffs for two years now. So the Horvat move is a big move for the reason of getting him and then being able to move Barzell to a position where I think he can be more valuable. Yeah, I agree. And, and I have to say, I didn't see him getting moved off center coming as much as maybe you did. I mean, I know there was talk about it over the summer when there was the possibility of acquiring Nazem Kadri. And you just thought that that was, at least for me, you thought that, that was going to be his position for the rest of his career. But you look at his face-off numbers, you look how that's been going. Terrible. Terrible. And you can't have him in the dot if, if, if he's not going to improve there. And he's, he's been in the league long enough where if he was going to get any better, he probably would have already. He's a 34% yeah, face-off I mean, man. You can't, and, you, and you replaced <laughs> him with a guy who's a 53%, which 52, 53% in the NHL, that's elite. So... Right, and not only that, but you can't have a guy like that taking, you know, these big-time face-offs, whether it's, you know, for a power play in the offensive zone. I mean, you're, you're losing 15 to 20 seconds right off the bat there if you're losing that face-off. The puck's getting sent down the other ice. you got to go retrieve it, and you're kind of, you know, shooting yourself in the foot a little bit. So as, as much as I'm, I'm kind of surprised by it, I, I definitely think it's a good move. I love what Horvat's been there so far. Again, like I'll, I'll keep saying it, the, the chemistry that those two have found mm -hmm. right off the bat here, uh, it's just more about keeping pucks out of their own net because they're, they're finding offense. I mean, and the power play has just blossomed since he showed Absolutely. up, too. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's not only with just him being on it, but also the depth that it brought to both units, right? Because then you're able to knock a guy down at power play two who was on power play one, makes that second unit a little, little stronger as well, right? So it kind of spreads the wealth out a little bit. And he's, he's definitely been as advertised with his net front, net front presence and uh, the deflections and the tips and stuff. And um, He's got a great shot, too. I mean, he's, he can do it all. And he, he shoots He's a really, puck. really talented player. Yeah, no, it's, it's a breath of fresh air. And, and hopefully, you know, over the course of time now that he's with the team, that, uh, you know, that's going to develop further and it's going to lead to more success. I, yeah, I mean, and, and I think it also opens the door for future acquisitions uh, not only in, in you know via trade, but free agency wise. Like he had said, I believe it was the first or second day that he was here that the Islanders were in his top five yeah. destinations, even for free agency. Right. So yes. I mean that goes to show you that you know like for him to be that like that, and he's an extremely popular player around right. the league. Right. You know he's got very good, very solid relationships around the league. So maybe that has an effect on you know we've had some swings and misses over the last couple of years or whatnot, but. I don't know how many of them we actually were in on. I think I, <laughs> I think the Goudreau thing was more. Of, uh, well, he said he never spoke to the Islanders. That's what I'm saying. Wishful thinking on our part, but, right? 
you know, when you lost out on Panarin and whatnot. But this is a this is a guy that you bring in that would foster those types of signings, you know, coming in the future. Yeah, you'd like to think that, you know, with him coming in and signing before he even touches the ice, right? Like, he saw enough before he even played a game where he's like, mm -hmm. yeah, I want to be here. I want to play in that building. I want to play with this team. I want to play for this management, this ownership group. So it says a lot about how far the Islanders have come as far as, you know, I guess the way they present themselves to potential free agents, potential Absolutely. players and stuff like that. So it is... It is uh, Nice to finally see that a guy of, of his caliber is, is willing to, to come and stay. Yep. You know, he's not ready to walk out the door as soon as July 1st comes, right? So hopefully we'll see more of that. But you talk about, you know, making their big-time acquisition. Do you see any – let's say they stay in this playoff race, and they probably will. Whether they make it or not, we'll see. But they're probably going to be in it here from now until April, right? So do you see them adding anything else, any sort of depth, whether it's on the defensive end or, or in the forwards? I think they have to because if you and what see are they now, giving up? <laughs> they don't well, got anything left. that's the question. Yeah. You know, um, you know, you're going to lose your third round pick this year. You've already traded your first, so now you have a second and a fourth. So you really don't want to have to trade that second if you don't have to. Right. Um, you do have some, you know, some, some prospects. I think I, I, I to this day will, will will argue that bringing Samuel Bolduc up now was uh, was a showcase. You know, Ratu coming up, that was a showcase. Like, that certainly ended up being a showcase. Yeah. Yes, it was definitely a showcase. And it was, you know, and it, it, it go. that's the only thing you could do at this point because you have some of these young players who are on the cusp of maybe being in the NHL. So get them out there, you know, show what they can do, show what kind of player they're going to be at the NHL level. And then uh, in Bolduc's case against that Van and against the Vancouver game, he, he had a really, really tough game, so he went right out after right. that. So I, I think that maybe, you know, you're going to have to do that. In the offseason, I could see them doing a little bit more retooling. You know, maybe it's easier to get Josh Bailey's, you know, mm -hmm. contra contract off the books if they can, you know, staple a player like that to him, you know, to kind of get, get it out of there. But they don't have a lot of assets, so I, I'm going to see... And I'm actually really surprised that teams have been so willing to give first-round picks up, considering that this draft is going to be as deep as it's supposed to be. Right. So I'm I'm kind of surprised by that. But look, there's been three big trades already: Tarasenko, uh, yeah. O'Reilly, and Horvat already moved. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a really interesting week and a half because some of these teams are going to have to respond. Yeah. No. No question about it. Definitely looking forward to seeing what happens there. But uh, once again, I want to thank everybody for hanging out here at Lost Farm Brewing Company, getting ready for the Islanders versus the. Boston Bruins. Going to be a big tilt there at 5 o'clock. And of course, want to thank everybody for tuning in live at twitch.tv slash hockey.ny. We're going to take another break. We'll be right back. I don't want to hear it. It's over. I can't believe they fell short again. Yeah, but they played so well. They made it to the semifinals two years in a row. The semifinals aren't the cup. God damn it. The heat was lightning. They'll get another shot at it next year. I don't even want to talk about it anymore, all right? They lost, okay? Let me just sit here and enjoy the one thing that makes me a little bit happy. This fresh, delicious, tasty, meaty, turkey-filled blue line combo. I eat three every day to help keep me strong. Hey, Donnie, can I have one of those? Coming right up. Talk about a blast from the blue line. Blue Line Deli and Bagels. Our goal is to make you a hero. Miss the days of mixtapes and arcades? Love the taste of a bold IPA or maybe an ice cold lager? There's a place where all of those magical things come together. Lost Farmer Brewing Company. At 63A East 2nd Street in the heart of Mineola, Lost Farmer combines a love of the 80s and a passion for quality beer to create brews that can only be described as gnarly, radical, and totally tubular. The retro vibe of the tasting bar will amp up your nostalgia while the blend of both local and exotic ingredients amp up your taste buds. Beer not your thing? Crack open a can of cider or a sip of Chardonnay on the extended patio. Order up from the snack menu? You can even bring your own. If you're more of a homebody, pick up a growler to go or order online at lostfarmerbrewing.com. And for all of Long Island's hockey fans, Lost Farmer created the delicious Stable Shaker American Lager to celebrate the newly built UBS Arena at Belmont Park. Whether you're at the stable for a hockey game, concert, or a comedy show, you can find Stable Shaker by can and draft around the arena. So raise a cup to the next cup with Lost Farmer Brewery, the future of Long Island craft beer.
And now, it's time for What's on Tap, a look ahead at the Islanders' upcoming schedule. That's right, folks. It's time for What's on Tap, a look ahead at the Islanders' upcoming schedule. And what do we have here? Obviously, we have Boston coming up at 5 o'clock, puck drop in just under 20 minutes. Then I'm doing very professional here. I'm ringing off my phone. <laughs> Boston today. They play Pittsburgh again on Monday into Pittsburgh. Then Wednesday, the Winnipeg Jets at home. And we will be back here at Lost Farmer Brewing Company for another viewing party. We're going to do a little NHL trivia that night. Ooh. Shake it up. Yeah, yeah. Going to do a little trivia night. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Sounds then uh, the LA Kings at home again at UBS Arena. That's going to be a tough one. The Kings revitalized after a short little retool, right? They're looking pretty good these days. And they could have Jeff Chikrin. Uh, um, right, uh, they've Jacob been working Chikrin, on that. Jeff Chikrin, oh my God, his father. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> Dating myself. <laughs> and then they have the Winnipeg Jets once again on the road. And we'll be back here again for another viewing party. That's right, 2.30. Stefan Ross is going to be here with me. We're going to be checking out the Islanders versus the Winnipeg Jets. We're also going to be raising money for another great cause. So definitely come on down on Wednesday. Come on down next week. Lots of fun here at Lost Farmer Brewing Company. So... Tony Stabile, with that lineup of games coming up, what do you see here? I see a tough. <laughs> <laughs> right, it doesn't tough, get any easier. Yeah, right? no, these these are uh, these are not easy teams to play against. Uh, Winnipeg, look, Winnipeg is a, is a, is a is an offensive team. They have a good goaltender in Hel Connor Hellebuck. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know, we got Mark Shifley, uh, you know, Kyle Connor. Um, you know, they they are they're they're going to be a tough. They're going to be tough at UBS Arena, and they're going to be tough in Winnipeg. That's a tough building to play in. So right. Uh, that's a tough trip, also, to get up there. That's, <laughs> that's Nobody a, wants to play in Winnipeg. Nobody not wants even, to go. Not that's, even the players that to play That is a tough trip. <laughs> when we were in Minneapolis, remember that? When we, we saw where Winnipeg was in relation to Minneapolis, I was shocked. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, it is, uh, uh, it's cold up there. Yes, it is. I hear it's very cold. <laughs> I don't think they're in the top five for most players' free, uh, free agent destinations. I can assure you that it's not. Yeah, it is. But they're, they're a victim of geography. It's, it's, it's <laughs> kind of apparent why they moved to Phoenix the first time so right. uh, <laughs> but uh, hey, look you got Pittsburgh again on Monday you absolutely know you're going to get in that game you're going to be in Pittsburgh this time so they cannot have the start that they had yesterday they need to you know come out and really really play hard at 60, at 60 minutes and look they, they've had success against Pittsburgh so they have to continue to do that they have to continue to be able to take those points because every time they play them this is it's, it's you know it's, it's a four point game like it's you, you need to take those points yeah and you never know over the course of the last 20 or some odd games you might end up seeing them catch them right especially if they win these head-to-head -head games and Pittsburgh maybe you know falls off a little bit lose a game here lose a game there then all of a sudden maybe they're an option for a team for the Islanders to leapfrog as well yeah. where they're not just t chasing that second wild card spot but I mean you can't really dream of uh, you know a divisional spot at this point right one through no. three those are pretty much locked up right. so you just got to hope to uh, you got to pick your poison here right you're basically either facing Carolina or Boston the first round I don't, I don't know who I want to face I, more honestly neither. if they get in neither yeah that's, well, we'll worry about that if and yeah, when the time yeah. comes. But, mm -hmm. but, yeah, look, it doesn't get any easier for the Islanders here. It's going to be a tough slate. But, look, if they keep showing up like they did last night, albeit late in the game, mm -hmm. but if they keep showing up and winning these games, they'll be in it. They'll give us something to watch and, and something that's, you know, exciting here. And, look, I mean, you have some fans already that are saying sell, sell, get rid of guys, get whatever, you know, assets you can out of these guys, trade Marlamov, trade Mayfield. I'd like to see them go on a little run here, make the playoffs, see what happens. You never know, especially with a goaltender like Ilya Soroka, what this team can do in the playoffs. And, and I'm very curious to see what sort of adjustments Lou, um, Lou I almost called, called him Lou Lambert, Lane Lambert makes <laughs> if and when they get to the playoffs to play that playoff style hockey, maybe some of that Barry Trot style hockey, because then maybe they can frustrate a team like Boston or Carolina. Uh, yeah, well, that's going to be the only way they're going to be able to do it. You know, you're going to hope that the, <laughs> the defensive core that you have, which, as we talked about with Stefan, is that this is, this is a, you know, a, a core that has gone deep into the playoffs multiple times. You're going to hope that that, you know, once you get into the playoffs, that that snaps in and they start playing the type of hockey that they played under Barry Trotz. But it's a question mark at this point because we haven't seen a whole lot of it this year. No, absolutely. Well, that was what's on tap. A lot of big games coming up. And now we're going to go into the hero of the week. So ladies and gentlemen, when you hear this song, that means it's time for the Hero of the Week, brought to you by the Blue Line Deli and Bagels, half price hero, which this week is the White Well, named after the man himself, Ilya Sorokin, featuring chicken cutlet, gravy, onion rings, bacon, fresh mozzarella on a toasted garlic hero. Show up to Blue Line Deli and Bagels' flagship location in Huntington, mention Hockey Night New York, and get half off 
the white whale. Not a bad deal, right? I might go there right now. So, Tony Stabile, who's your hero of the week? Well, it's one of my favorite players on his team, and it's Zach Parise. I mean, okay. Zach Parise hits, okay. he gets his 1,200 game last night, scores a goal in the game. Uh, this, this guy, 38 years old, is... It's a tireless worker. He is a joy to watch play. Old style kind of a player is is able to. He's had 15 goals this year. I, I just I love watching him play. I'm so glad that he's he's been on in, in the Islander uniform for the last two years. And I honestly hope they bring him back. He's great. Yeah, you know, and 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 actually, I'm right there with you, buddy. I went with Parise as well. Big big goal last night. He gets the 1200th game. Gets the game puck there. And I mean. If only they had this guy in his prime, right? Oh, God, please. <laughs> Don't even get me started. Because uh, what a, I didn't know what a workhorse he was. You mm -hmm. know, like I knew he was a great player. He had a lot of great seasons playing in Minnesota, playing in New Jersey. And you always see the point totals. You know, you play some fantasy hockey, right? You always see his numbers up there. But if you're not focusing on those teams, you, you don't necessarily know their game front to back, right? Mm -hmm. And he's come to the island here, again, like you said, 38 years old. My God, and doing what he's doing. And he busts his ass on every shift. Yes, he does. He does not take a shift off. And even though he doesn't have a letter on his sweater, I mean, what a leader to have in the locker room like that, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Who's, who's uh, you know, he's gone deep in the playoffs. He's uh, played on a lot of successful teams. And uh, he sets a great example for the younger guys in this squad. So, yeah, Zach Parise, buddy. Yeah. Hero of the week. I love it. Yeah. Love it. There you have it, folks. So, once again, stop on in to Blue Line Deli and Bagels, flagship location in Huntington on Jericho Turnpike. Mention Hockey Night New York and get half off the White Whale. There you have it. So, let's see you here. We got about 12 minutes until puck drop on the Islanders versus Bruins. So, Tony, I'm going to swing the question that we, we, we tossed at Stefan earlier. I mean, you, you, have, you have a coach who was with Barry Trotz, knows the defensive system that they played back to front. They had a lot of success with it. They went to two conference finals, two semifinals, whatever you want to call it, right? Under that tutelage, I mean, yeah, a couple of names changed, and the head coach changed, but why are they having such a hard time defending compared to when they, in, in years previous? Uh, look, under, <laughs> under, <laughs> under Barry Strotz, they played a very, very structured system, okay? It did not allow for a tremendous amount of offensive, um, I don't want to say flair, but you understand what I'm saying. You know, it's, they, they played a cautious kind of a style of play and it worked it's it's a hard working it's a hard working style of play but everybody and their brother said that oh okay well the Yonas need to score more goals in order to, to get to the next step even though they were a goal away from making the Stanley Cup finals just you know what three years ago two years ago so you you wanted to see them try to maximize their offensive potential which they really weren't doing under Barry and now you're seeing that, but yet now you're seeing the defensive uh, deficiency that comes along with that style of play. You know, you're not playing the cautious game. You're not, and you know, and as Stefan said also, we talked about earlier, this is not exactly a fast team. If they right. had more speed, it would be a little bit easier to get back and, you know, you make a mistake, you, make, you know, there's a turnover, but you're seeing more mistakes Mm -hmm. than you have under any time right. since before Barry took over. And it's not a change in personnel, it's a change in style of play. And that's really where, the, I, as, as far as I can see, that the problem has lied, is that you know, these guys have not been able to you kind of straddle the fence on being cautious yet being, you know, trying to you know, race up the ice and, sure. and get this. The transition game is totally different than what it's been in the past. So as we enter the final quarter of the season here for the New York Islanders, how would you assess Lane Lambert's job at this point? Uh, I mean, you could give him a, a C at best. I okay. mean, if you think okay. about it, I mean, they're scoring more goals, but they're giving up more goals also. Yes, and I'll be are. quite honest with you, without Ilya Sorokin playing the way that he has this year, this team would be a bottom no 10 team. No doubt about it. Now, Varlamov is good, too. He might have helped yes. him out a little oh, bit. No, no, quite no but question, that's the luxury that they have with two great goaltenders. But to your point, you're absolutely right. If they didn't have that sort of goaltending back there, they'd be in a lot of trouble. A lot more of trouble, trouble than they're already in. Because I, okay, so I was at the Vancouver game just recently. Okay. okay? And, <laughs> and as bad a night as Ilya Sorokin had, Okay, it could have. They could have scored eight or nine goals in that game. You, I sure. mean, that's, it's 
it's totally different. It's totally different. And, you know, it's sometimes the grass is always greener. Oh, we want more offense. Oh, we want, you know, we want to be able to win games 6-5 or whatever. Or, you know, we'll still play the same defense but yet be able to score. It's not that way. There is a fine line that you have to kind of straddle, and they're not, they haven't figured out how to do it yet. Mm. And Lane has not figured out a way to get them to do it either. So, right. yes, the players do, you know, Romanov the other day said that, you know, he hasn't been playing his best hockey. Um, I am not a fan of Sebastian Ajo. I, I, <laughs> okay, I, I, I really, enough. I don't, I don't really care for him out there. I know, I understand you want another puck moving defenseman back there, but well, that's a spot. That if you're going to look to, you know, upgrade, that's a spot right there. You well, want to upgrade. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because you talked about Bolduc earlier, saying they might be showcasing. Why would they be looking to unload a guy like him when they're already kind of scrambling to fill that bottom pairing? Right? They still haven't figured it out. They've been rotating through Aho and Salo's been a man missing since the beginning of the season. I think he's hurt now, but it's, okay. I think he's hurt but now. even still, they've, they've cycled through a couple of different guys who obviously haven't cemented themselves in there yet. So, like, why? You, how could you deal a guy like that? when you know it's kind of a point of weakness already i feel like you gotta get bet on him and hope that he can eventually take that spot the the only reason why i say it is because it, 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 it's the one factor that no other hockey team in the nhl or gm is going through and it's that lou lamarillo is 80 years old and he cannot wait another year or two mm. to get to that point to have his team as a stanley cup contender so in order to Upgrade, you may have to, you know, deal what you have, and that's really all that he has at this point because they're out of picks. Okay, fair enough. Well, now we're going to throw it to the audience here. We're going to get some questions and questions room. So here we go. Okay. Got to remember to put that volume. Yeah, it's the volume problem. <laughs> it's Problematic. time for questions brewing. Brought to you by Lost Farmer Brewing Company. That's right, folks. It's time for questions brewing. Thanks a lot for hanging out with us here on your Saturday afternoon here at twitch.tv slash hockey night NY. And our first question comes in from New Wave Halifax. Josh Bailey, Paggio, Clutterbuck, and Walsh are hurt. Is there now a concern having to use AHL call-ups on lines three and four against top teams? Tony. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the simple answer. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a matter of depth. And, you know, as of right now, you traded Ratu away. Um, you know, it, obviously that you upgrade that position because you got Horvat in that deal. But yeah, I mean the fact that Andrey Andreov is playing, yeah. you know, uh, is playing with the Islanders right now, mm. yeah, it's concerning. I mean, you know, they're they're not looking to call Russ, uh, uh, Ishikov off at, up at this point, even though he's played very well at the HL level this year. Uh, and yeah, they're they're a little short right now. So depth is definitely a question. And I think even when Bailey, <laughs> even when Bailey was in the lineup, I think most people would like to see him, you know, in the press box anyway. So I'm glad you brought up Josh Bailey because that's our next question from T Donaldson 20. Tom, how's it going? Uh, think Bailey is being sat or actually hurt? No, I think he's hurt. Think I don't. He's I, hurt. I, I don't th if I, if they're going to sit him, they're just going to sit him. I don't think they're going to pull him in the middle of the game and and just uh, and then it's a play that he's hurt. I don't. I don't think so. And they don't really have the depth in order to do it anyway. If there was someone that was looking to take his spot. They would be doing it just because it's the best thing for the team. I, I, I don't. I don't think that that's the case. If he's, they're saying he's hurt. He's hurt. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with that. I mean, as as much of a struggle as he's had this season, he's still a guy that they're gonna want in the lineup. When you think about the guys beneath him, right? Whether it's those AHL guys or whatever the case may be, they'd, they'd rather have Josh Bailey in there than not, even oh. if he's not putting up the points or the production that you kind of want to see out of him, right? Correct. Yeah. All right, next question once again from New, New Wave Halifax. Does Lane Lambert deserve positive credit for his coaching in the comeback win against Pittsburgh? One comment on Twitter said Lambert coached his ass off to secure that winning result. How do you feel about that? I don't really see it that way, but, okay. I mean, look, I mean, did he, he call the timeout when he was supposed to? That's another thing that, you know, over the years we, we as fans have complained. Call the timeout when you need to. He did that. They did respond to him after that case. It did stop the bleeding. Okay. Uh, they didn't really wake up until the third period. I don't know if that was Lambert that did that. I don't know if it was a guy in the locker room that, that stepped up and said, hey, we better wake up and then we got to do what we have to do here. But uh, I don't know. I, I don't know if I would give Lambert that because after that, after that practice – that he had, that he was, you know, right. A lot of talk about that. Yeah, yeah, didn't really respond all that no. well to it on the ice. So, no. um, you know, I, I'm not really, I'm not really there yet. Yeah, I, I really don't know how to how to weigh Lane Lambert yet. You know, like definitely, it's more disappointing than not. I, I expected more out of this team this year, and they've been struggling just to hang on to the to the playoff battle, let alone a spot, right? And I'm just not sure how to grade this guy yet. You're giving him a C, and I'd probably be right around there too. You know, I, I thought that they would they would kind of come out of the gate a little better. I mean, they had a good November, and then they've just been up and down ever since then. And, and he hasn't been able to just 
get this team to play consistent, good hockey. And they don't. Re- and, and they don't. I, I don't feel that he's really been. And again, this could change as your first year head coach and whatnot. But he, he's not adept at making changes on the fly. It's mm-hmm. you know, like in the middle of the period. If they're having a bad period, they're having a bad period. That's just that's not changing during the middle of the period. They go in the locker room. Maybe they have some they have a talk, whatnot, or whatever. They come out. Maybe they'll have a better period after that. Mm-hmm. But on the fly, like that's. It's you haven't seen that, and it's that that's directly the head coach. Interesting point there, and we get one from T Boyle thirteen in the house here at Lost Farmer. Very very direct question: Are the Islanders making the playoffs? Uh, <laughs> that might be the toughest question we've had tonight. Uh, mm. I I don't think so. I I really don't. And I and I'll be I'll be honest with you: the teams that are ahead of them are they're just better. They've been playing better all year. And they have assets to make more moves. So, mm-hmm. you know, with the the current injury situation that they that they have, I mean, you have Holstrom, Holmstrom that's playing. He's playing seven minutes a night. You know, he's right. playing ten minutes a night or less, and mm-hmm. that's your third line. You know, right. winger. Eventually, these guys are going to start to wear down because of the injuries and being able having to and, play them twenty and twenty. And that minutes is a night. something new that Lane Lambert's doing here. That Trotz never really did during his tenure. It was he's starting to weigh heavily on the lean heavily on the top two lines. Yes. Whereas yes. usually you saw the, the four-line rotation. Now, granted, obviously your top lines are going to get a little more time here and there, but it's it's been the most disparate as it's, as it's been since I've seen him in a very long time where he's really leaning on those lines at the top. So he's, he's not trusting his bottom his bottom six as much. Well, his, his, his fourth line is, is incomplete at this point. You know, yeah. you, have, you have Clutterbuck who has not been able to stay healthy. You know, and this was the question that we had with Clutterbuck, you know, leading up to this, you know, to his contract extension. He plays a style of hockey that a five foot ten guy is not going to be able to continue to play over the course of a fifteen year career. Sure. So he's been out of the lineup. Sizikis has been, you know, you know, has been his normal self. Martin is not as as effective when when uh, um, when Clutterbuck is not out there. And then you have Ross Johnson as one point one million dollars salary that they only play seven to ten times a year. So right. I mean, right. it's a wasted roster spot mm-hmm. if you you know if you if we're really talking about it now. Yeah, there's been a lot of debate over that roster spot for a long time. Yeah. But I don't know. I mean, look, I mean, we've talked about it a lot on the show. It's but J.F. Berube all over again. <laughs> I mean, think <laughs> wow. about it. Like, he's just... That's the name just, I haven't heard in a long time. Well, I know. But, yeah, I mean, it's it's really what it is. He just he doesn't play. Well, last one coming in from Twitter from Michael. Do you think that Clutterbuck and Wallstrom are done for the season? I, all indications seem to point that they're they're out, right? They're not coming back. I don't think. I th- I think that uh, they haven't announced anything on Wallstrom, but I mean, there's been more than a few whispers that he's out for the year. And Clutterbuck, look, every time he comes back, he plays five or six games and yeah. he's off again. So, I it, whatever is nagging him at this point, just let him sit until he's 100 percent or at 90 percent at least, because it doesn't seem like he's been to that point yet this year. Yeah, I guess so. Well, that's going to do it for questions, Bruin, and that's also going to do it for us here at Hockey Night New York because the puck is about to drop on Islanders versus Bruins. So once again, I want to thank everybody for coming out to Lost Farmer. Everybody tuning in. We're going to head on out. So, folks, once again, thank you so much for hanging out with us here at Lost Farmer Brewing Company here in Mineola, getting ready for Islanders versus Bruins. Big thanks to Stefan Rosner of NYI Hockey Now and, of course, Hockey Night in New York. And a big thanks to you, Tony Stabile, for coming out. been a long time, pal. It has great been a long time. Great to have you here, bud. I, it's been great. I've, I've really and thoroughly enjoyed myself. I'm glad to hear that. Huh? And, of course, a big thanks to our great, great sponsor, starting with Blue Line Deli and Bagels, located at 719 West Jericho Turnpike in Huntington, official partner of the New York Islanders and the greatest deli around. Check them out at bluelinedeli.com. And a huge, huge thanks to Lost Farmer Brewing Company, not only for sponsoring the show here, but, of course, giving us the presence here to do the show, a little pregame show here. Great, great time. If you're not here yet, get on over here for Islanders versus Bruin. The puck is about to drop. Check them out at Lost Farmer Brewing. Com. They're located at 63A 2nd Street in Mineola. And a big thanks to Main Street Board Game Cafe located at 307 Main Street in Huntington Village. Check them out at MainSTBoardGameCafe.com. And also, if you're here hanging out with us at Lost Farmer, once again, we're doing some raffles and prizes here. We're raising money for a great cause, the Long Island Warriors. Help a hero. That's going to be helping out the uh, Drinkman family. So please get involved, buy some tickets, raise some money for a great, great cause. For Tony Stabile, for Sean Cuthbert, for Lost Farmer Brewing Company, we've been Hockey Night in New York. Thank you so much for checking us out. We'll see you next week.